Hey, good morning. How you doing? I'm wearing a heavy shirt this morning, and you know why? Because it's cold in Florida. I thought you said it was warm in Florida. It is some place. Some place it's warm, she says. It's supposed to be warm in Florida, my entourage. My entourage brings me to a place where it gets cold. I said, I want to go someplace where it's warm. She says, let's go to Florida. Well, here we are, and now it's cold. It's warmer than up north. Oh, okay. She says it's a lot warmer than Wisconsin. That's where we came from, Wisconsin. Hey, I want to talk to you today about why faith is transferable. Transferable. <clears throat> the word transferable means, in in the case of something like this, means from one person to another. Think about that. Think about that. We were talking last night uh, in our Bible study after the message, so it wasn't shown on Periscope because we, after uh, after we we do the teaching, then we we go around the room and everybody uh, jumps in and and uh, and the discussion, of course, always ends up on faith. It always ends up on faith, and we we're talking a lot about why how faith can be transferred. From one person to another. In other words, you can use your faith for somebody else. And I was talking last night. It just kind of rose up in me as we, as we were uh, going through this. That in healing school, uh, the only healing school I'm really aware of is the healing school at Rama, uh, and they have a wonderful healing school. And what they do down there is when somebody is sick uh, and they come there to Tulsa to go to healing school, is they will bring them in, sit them down, and teach them God's word on healing until they get healed. And people literally get healed sitting in their seats. We've seen that. We have seen some absolute miracles down there. But some people die. Some people never never get a hold of it. Some do. There was a preacher from, oh, uh, probably two or three hundred miles away. And he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. So he decided he was going to go to healing school. And so Sunday after his church service, he would get in his car and he'd drive to Tulsa and he got himself an efficiency apartment. And every morning at nine o'clock, he went to healing school. And he went back and rested and had some lunch. At two o'clock, he went back to healing school again because they have it twice a day. And he, he did this for six months. And he got healed. He got healed. For six months, he got healed. One person, and I know uh, this case, of, of this case, because I heard the instructor talking about it, uh, a man came and he says, I've been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and a lot of those people down there are terminally ill. And he says, but he says, I really don't have time to uh, to spend here. He says, but... I just come here, I want to get healed. And he was told to come in, to make this a priority in his life, come in and sit down and sit there until he gets healed. And I have thought about that over the years, and I don't want to contradict anybody or say anybody that's wrong, but when you think about it, Jesus never did that to anybody. 
He, ne he, never, he never said to a sick person, now you follow me around and you listen to my teachings until you get healed. Would somebody have gotten healed listening to Jesus' teachings? Oh, yeah. Oh, I believe so. Absolutely. Yeah. Same thing with uh, that man who came to healing school who, who was only able to come there that one time. He should have left there healed. He should have been healed. Somebody should have used their faith to get that man healed. But they didn't do it. So years ago, I thought to myself, well, if healing school works, how about a blessing school? How about an abundance school? Or if you want, a prosperity school. So I started teaching prosperity and abundance in church. And over, and I did it for, for several years, taught a, abundance and the blessing and, and prosperity. And, and a lot of people left the church who didn't agree with my message on prosperity. Well, we've got plenty. So, well, well, a lot of people don't. A lot of people need to increase their faith for, for, for money and for finances and, and everybody's, everybody doesn't have a, a good pension. The people who left the church were the people who had money who really didn't care about the people who didn't have money. And that was my, my focus was on the people who were broke. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That word poor means broke. That's what I was doing. I was preaching the gospel to the broke. And the gospel to the broke is you don't have to be broke no more. That's the good news to, to the broke. So I just preached constantly over and over God's word on abundance and the fact that God wants people to live a good life, an abundant life. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I mean, how much clearer is that? But then, about four years ago, I realized that I could move people into abundance without all that teaching. Simply by speaking the blessing over them. And it worked. It worked. Now, we still talk some about abundance, but I don't emphasize it as, as much as I did then because now I can take anybody who's broke and move them into abundance, just like I can take anybody who is sick and get them healed. How do I do that? I do that with my faith. Because my faith is transferable to them. You say, well, Pastor Jim, I got to see that in the Bible. All right. All right. Hey, I wouldn't preach anything like this unless I had verses for it. Let me tell you. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Peter's talking about the man at the gate who was healed. The Peter and John are going into the gate into the temple. And the man there is asking alms of them who entered the temple. And Peter and John were about to go into the temple. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look at us. And he gave heed to them. He looked at them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, what I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And the man received strength in his legs and in his feet. He had never walked from the day he was born. He was born, he was 40 years old. He had never walked. Never walked. So then in verse 16, Peter explains how that happened. He says, 
and his name through faith in the name of Jesus has made this man strong. It was faith in the name of Jesus that healed the man. Just like faith in the name of Jesus will increase your finances too. That's the key. That's not only the key to healing, it's the key to, the key to financial increase. But, but here's the deal. The man sitting at the gate had no faith in the name of Jesus. He didn't have any faith in anything except to be a beggar. But Peter did. Peter used his faith to heal that man. And we started thinking about that and talking about that and talking about the literally hundreds and thousands of people who have come into our church and have come across our path who had no faith but had been healed of terminal disease. Many of them off their deathbeds. People off their deathbeds, who people were healed off their deathbeds who weren't even saved. People who were healed from strokes, they had no faith for healing. Doctor says, I'm going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. I said, in the name of Jesus, I come against that. And they get healed. Not because of their faith, because of mine. The man who showed up at healing school said, I don't have time, but I'm here to be healed. Should have walked out that door healed. I'm telling you what, people come to my church. I don't tell them to sit down and listen to me for six months. I get them healed the first time they show up. People call me on the phone. Say, Pastor Jim, I need a financial breakthrough. I get them a financial breakthrough right now. Right now. They call me and say, Pastor Jim, I've been suffering with this and that. I get them healed right now. I want them healed right now. God is a God of right now. Faith is right now. Jesus, everybody that came to Jesus was healed right now. Now, many times when you, when you pray and speak over a sick person, they will heal progressively. But I'm telling you what, the healing power of God goes into those people right now now to effect a cure and they generally begin to feel better in a, in a within a day or sometimes within an hour i've had people terminally ill flat on their back they're up in an hour walking around go back to the doctor two weeks later and there's no cancer we have had that happen a lot of times glory to god glory to god you can you i always say this if I need something from God, I don't care whose faith I have to use to get it. You can use my faith to get what you want or need from God. And if I need, if I need, I can use somebody else's faith to get what I want. And I do. I'm not proud. No pride here. I'm telling you what, if I need something, I'm going to find somebody who has faith for it. Because that faith is transferable. Glory to God. Is this good? Did you ever hear anything like this before? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your comments and things on this. This is a, I'll tell you this, if you get a hold of this, you can help people who are sick get healed, even if they have no faith. If you get a hold of this, you can help people move into abundance who have no faith for finances. I do that all the time. Jesus said, where two of you are agreed as touching anything, it shall be done for them. And somebody in our church said last Sunday, it's like jumper cables between two batteries. When you put jumper cables between two batteries, the stronger battery will prevail and the, ba and the car will start. The stronger battery will help out the weaker battery. And I'm telling you what, that's how the prayer of agreement works. Like jumper cables. Glory to God. Huh? Hallelujah. Hey, hook up with this ministry. Hook up with us. Become a partner with this ministry. When you do, you have access to me. I will pray with you anytime you want or need. You can call me anytime if you're a partner of this ministry. Go to my website, increasenow.com. Become a partner with this ministry. Hey, make it a great day today. I'm out of time. But have a wonderful day. And remember this. God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. Tell all of your friends about these messages.